Hey guys, it's Mrs. Smith. I'm getting a lot of questions about this week's um, code.org activity. So I want to show you, I'm going to walk you through the steps to try to eliminate some of the confusion. All right, so when you're on the assignment, uh, this link over here just takes you to my example. I just wanted to show you an example of, of a finished product. The links that you need to use to get to the to the assignment are down here. So if you want to do the artist, you click on this link. And if you want to do the dance party, you click on this link. So up here, I have an important note. It says, <clears throat> since we need two periods to complete these, you will have to sign in. So last week and the week before when we did Minecraft, it really wasn't important if you signed in. Uh, when you don't sign in, it doesn't save your progress. So this week, since we're starting a project that we're going to need two weeks to work on, you do need to sign in so your progress gets saved. So I gave you the directions on how to sign in, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that because it is a little bit tricky. All right, so let's pretend like you're going, going to do the dance party project. You're going to click on this link, and it will take you to code.org. So here's where it gets a little bit confusing because not only does it take you to code.org, but it actually takes you right into the assignment. And a lot of people think that, oh, I should just go ahead and get started. But you didn't sign in yet. So you have to sign in and then you have to go back to Seesaw and get to this link again. So you're going to close this video for now, but you are going to watch it later. Oh, it's forcing us to put in a birthday. All right, put in how old you are. Whoop. Click on OK. All right, so you're going to click sign in in the top right hand corner. And then you're going to click the long red continue with Google button. And because you're already logged into your Google account, the com your computer or your iPad already knows who you are, but it's just asking you to confirm, choose an account. So you're going to click your name. It's asking your permission. Code.org wants access to your Google account. We have to give it permission or it won't work. So we click allow. It is a trusted source, by the way. I've been using this for years. Okay, so now here's where I wish they would fix this, but uh, they haven't fixed it for years. So now we're logged in. How do I know that? Because it has my name up here, but we are no longer on the dance party activity. So the easiest way to get back there is just to go back to Seesaw. Click on the link again. And now you'll see your name up here. It takes you to code.org. You're already signed in and you're on the exact activity that you're going to get started on. Okay, so once it's loaded, you're ready to go. Remember, don't skip watching these uh, instructional videos. They tell you what you need to know. Whoops, wasn't expecting that. All right, don't skip the videos. They tell you the information that you need to know for your next step. So you're going to watch that video. I'm closing it for now, but you're not gonna close it. You're all going to watch it. And here's how this is set up. Uh, both the dance party and the artist are set up the same way. We are on puzzle number one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you get to ten, that's where you will create your own. You can't just jump in and start creating your own. You have to learn how to do it. This is not set up exactly like Minecraft. You're going to learn new things. Particularly, you're going to learn about something called an event. And an event is when your computer is waiting for something to happen before it performs an actual move. So in this case, it's waiting for the music to change and then your dancer will change its, its dance move. All right, so puzzle number one, it's going to tell you how to get your dancer onto the screen. You're going to drag the red make a new cat at center block into the workspace and connect it inside the setup block. It specifically says choose cat or sloth to create your first answer. So you can't choose anything that you want. You must follow those directions. All right. So you're going to drag this over to here. And I'm just curious to see what options are in here. It just gives you the two. All right. So cat or sloth in the center. You can make this bigger if you want to. 
Go ahead and click run. And there you have the cat in the center doing whatever that dance move was, the bop, I'm not sure what it was. Please don't worry if you don't like that song because notice it didn't say anything about choosing a song yet. Even though it lets you choose a song, we're not concerned about that until we get to level 10. Once we get to level 10, then it's open-ended creativity. That's where you get to pick your song, pick your dancers, pick your backup dancers, pick your background, and then you're gonna create your actual dance choreography. Don't worry about that till you get to 10, okay? So as you go through the levels, it's going to teach you step-by-step step what you need to know. So level one, how to put that dancer on the screen. Level two, this is where it's going to talk to you about events, which I just explained to you. So please don't skip it. Go ahead and watch it. It's only one minute and 43 seconds out of your life. All right, so watch that. It will explain to you events, and then it's going to ask you to use an event block. All right, so the event blocks are green. When the up arrow is pressed, when this up arrow pressed block is used, it lets you run code when you press the arrow buttons. Use the cat do a clap once block to make the cat clap. And then the note says, make sure to press your up arrow key after clicking the run button. All right, so notice this green event block does not have a little tiny opening at the top. That means it doesn't get connected to anything. It doesn't have to be connected to anything. It actually is a standalone code. It, so just leave that where it is, but when we do have to add the purple to it. When we press the up arrow, we want the cat to clap. All right, so you're going to click run, but after you click run, you're also going to have to press the up arrow to make the cat clap. So here I go. Run. I'm gonna make him clap when the music changes. Oh, whoops, I waited too long. <laughs> Let me try that again. Run. There he goes. I'm pressing the up arrow on my keyboard, by the way. You could do either one. All right, so I passed that level successfully, and now I'm moving on. So as you can see, you cannot just skip to level 10. You must go through the puzzles. That wouldn't. It probably will take you just today, one day, to get that done. And then you're ready to start creating your own, which we will share with the class when we're done. All right, guys, have fun with this. Uh, I can't wait to see what you create.